Hello and good morning friends welcome to the CEC ATZ live lecture dear friends today we would be talking on a very very important subject uh, you might have uh, learnt more about uh, environment uh, you might be a student of management uh, but uh, have you ever thought of that uh, environmental management uh, could be one of the best subjects to study uh, now dear friends catering to your needs today we would be talking on uh, one of the most interesting topics and the topic is uh, air pollution we would be discussing on its causes effects as well as its present status in india and for this very discussion we have with us in our studios dr gitanjali kaushik dr gitanjali kaushik is a air quality expert she has done her phd from iit as well as she is an mba from uk so let's welcome our guest dr gitanjali kaushik and let's uh, try to understand the topic uh, air pollution hello ma'am welcome to the dissect lecture uh, good morning everyone Uh, it's a great opportunity for me to be here and discussing this topic at such an opportune time so uh, dear friends in my opinion that today we have three p's which are facing india so the first happens to be population the second happens to be poverty and the third which is growing day by day is pollution so today we'll talk in detail about air pollution its causes effects the harmful effects actually and the present status in which india today stands so let's start so starting with pollution pollution is actually the undesirable changes in the surroundings that is around us which have a harmful impact on plants animals and also us the human beings however this happens when short term economic gains are made at the cost of long term benefits for the humanity for example installation of filters better technologies are expensive however the companies do not install them and the disadvantage is the human life which suffers when such things are not done and as we all are aware none of the natural phenomena have led to a greater change as has caused by mankind and over the years we all are aware that we have contaminated our air water and land the three basic necessities on which our life depends so just a small question we need space to live but we need it right but we still can survive water if we don't drink for a few hours we still will be alive but when it comes to air do you think we can survive if we cannot if we don't get good quality air for even a few minutes so this highlights the importance of air for us so you can see how important air is for us so coming on to pollutants pollutants basically are solids liquids or gaseous substances which are generally problematic when they actually come in concentrations greater than their natural concentrations and they are generally caused due to human activity or the anthropogenic activity and have a detrimental effect on our environment detrimental meaning harmful impact then again what is important to note here is that it is the nature and the concentration of a pollutant which determines the effect on human health for example you take you consider two pollutants maybe benzene or carbon dioxide both are considered as pollutants but benzene by its sheer nature has a greater harmful impact it's a carcinogen and when you compare it with co2 co2 is not that harmful and then if you see the concentration co2 will have an adverse impact only at very high concentrations as compared to benzene which will be very harmful even in very small concentrations so this is very important point which has to be noted by all of us so you can see the scar which is emitting gases and also particulate matter which is harmful for us then coming on to a broader classification of pollutants from an ecological perspective there are three categories the first one is degradable or non persistent pollutants the second is slowly degradable or persistent pollutants and the last category is non degradable pollutants it's easy to understand right from the term first is degradable degradable meaning it can be rapidly broken down by the natural processes 
So these are organic in nature. So the living organisms can act on these and then break them down. For example, your domestic sewage, the discarded vegetables, as you can see in the slide. This waste is organic in nature. Coming on to the second category, the slowly degradable or the pollutants which remain in our environment for several years in an unchanged state. So they take a decade or maybe longer for their complete degradation. And in this category, we have our pesticides like DUDT and most of our commonly used plastics. So they take a long time to degrade. And then the last category is of non-degradable pollutants. So these are the ones which do not degrade and they stay in the environment for a very long time. And these are the ones which are harmful as they enter our bodies and start uh, causing impacts. So in this category, we have toxic elements like lead, mercury and others. So now talking about air, what is air? Air is actually a mixture of gases. Coming on to atmosphere, atmosphere is basically a layer of air around the earth which acts like a protective shield. Again, atmosphere also is a mixture of various gases and also the particles which are suspended. Coming on to the gas which constitutes a major portion that is nitrogen. The percentage of nitrogen is like 78% in the atmosphere. So it's basically the most abundant gas. However, nitrogen cannot be utilized directly. Excepting few organisms like bacteria and blue-green algae, it cannot be directly taken up. First of all, it has to be converted into nitrates through a process of nitrification. And then these nitrates are utilized by plants. And further in the food chain, they actually are taken up by the organisms. The next important gas in the atmosphere is oxygen. It constitutes close to 21%. And as we all know, we all need oxygen to survive. It plays an important role in respiration. Coming on to the third category, you have argon, which is close to 1%, and carbon dioxide. Why is carbon dioxide important? We know that carbon dioxide is the gas that is released from when we breathe or when we respire. And we, also, we always consider that it is only the oxygen which is important. But my friends, just consider this. CO2 is as important because this is the gas which is taken up by the plants through the process of photosynthesis. And this gas, in the presence of sunlight, is converted into chemical energy in the form of starch, which is food for all of us. So this gas is also important. But what is important to realize is the dynamic balance between CO2 and oxygen. And it is because of our activities, this balance is getting disturbed. And once this balance is disturbed, the concentrations keep on increasing. And that is a cause of concern for, of, for us because it is causing global warming, greenhouse effect. Then as we have just discussed, this, is, this table gives us the proportion of the gases in the atmosphere. So nitrogen is the most dominant, almost 78%. The second is oxygen, 21%. And then argon, close to 1%. Then we have carbon dioxide. And the other gases are present in trace amounts. So we have hydrogen here, oxygen, ozone here, and also methane. So in our atmosphere, even traces of water vapor are present, along with these trace gases. However, what is important to note that these gases are variable, and their content varies according to time and place. So there is both spatial as well as temporal variation. Then a very important component is the ozone. Why is ozone important? We have been reading this for a long time. Ozone is important because it protects us from the harmful ultraviolet radiations of the sun. And we all are aware that our Antarctica had a big ozone hole. And from this hole, the solar radiations were entering inside our atmosphere and our Earth. And once these harmful radiations enter, they can cause skin cancers. However, it is good news that this hole is now becoming smaller in size. However, we should take care that we do not release those chemicals which disrupt this ozone because this layer is quite important for us. But ozone is always not good. Which ozone is not good? 
the ozone which is present at the ground level. That ozone is not good and it is a pollutant for us. Then we have just talked about gases, now we will also talk about the particles which are present. So there are minute liquid and solid particles present, these are known as aerosols and most of these are a result of soil erosion, forest fires, oceanic sprays and are also released from the volcanic eruptions. But these are the natural sources of these particulate matter. The other common sources from the mankind include industrial and agricultural activities which also lead to a release of these particles into the atmosphere. However, their content is negligible. <coughs> But these particles are also important because they also serve as condensation nuclei, meaning they provide a surface for the water droplets to combine and form clouds. Then they also influence the temperature by interacting with sunlight. So we see how our atmosphere first of all is important for us, what are the various components of our atmosphere and what is the importance of each of these components. So as we have just discussed, these are the various layers of the atmosphere. So starting from the surface, you have the troposphere, then you have the stratosphere, mesosphere and the thermosphere. So our plane flies in the stratosphere. Another very important fact about the stratosphere is the presence of the ozone layer, which is responsible for protecting us from the ultraviolet radiations. Now, Coming on to air pollution, so we have just seen how the nature and concentration of a pollutant is responsible for determining the impacts, adverse impacts on the human health. So if we take a comparison, right, how much food we eat, we eat in grams, maximum a kilogram. Coming on to water, we take 2 to 4 liters of water on an average and then we, when we talk about air. My friends, you will be surprised to know that in a day, an average human being breathes close, close to 12,000 liters of air. So, the sheer amount is so huge when we can't even compare. So, you can imagine how important air is for us. We cannot live without air. And that is why breathing in of quality air is also all the more important. Further, when we are taking it such huge quantities of air, so if even you have a small concentration, it becomes more significant as compared to similar levels which are present in our food or water. Another very important fact about air is that the pollutants which enter the air, they can spread easily to different places. So my friends, it's important for us to realize that if a pollutant is released in the atmosphere, it will not confine itself there. It will go to distant places. So, pollution is not the problem of a single country. There is no boundary to pollution. Once <clears throat> a pollutant enters, everybody has to bear the adverse impacts. So, since we are talking about air pollution, we should know the history how this issue came into prominence. So we will discuss some of the episodes where air pollution became and assumed such huge proportions that the humanity had to take notice of air pollution. We just could not neglect it. So during the past few decades, pollution particularly of the air has been an, an issue of concern. Air pollution episodes of disaster proportions have occurred in London, California, Belgium, Mexico as well as other places and these have brought into public focus the danger of this new problem in the urban growth. We are developing, our economy is growing, the standard of income is rising but along with it is growing pollution. We have more cars. Everybody wants a bigger car, an SUV. But what we are not realizing is the pollution which everything is causing. So coming on to the London episode. <coughs> we 
we all know as the industrial revolution took place, it was responsible for setting in of air pollution onto Europe on a big way. The industries as well as the houses, they relied heavily on coal for their heating and cooking needs. Since these countries are coal countries, you need heat and burning of coal provided that heat. However, when you burn coal, gases are released, for example, sulfur dioxide. And during winters, what happens is the temperature is low, the wind speed is low, so there is no dispersion and that causes the building up of pollutants in the surrounding air. And this happened during winter months, so the smoke particles trapped in the fog gave it a yellow black color and because the temperature was low and the wind speed was also low, it was not able to disperse and it remained suspended over the city for several days. You will be surprised to know that during the 20th century, eight episodes occurred only in London between 1948 and 1962. However, the episode which took place in 1952 has been the major one in the history of air pollution. So, in this picture you can see London and uh, the smog which is there, you have to take a clear look over this picture to be able to see this. It's hazy everywhere. So this fog began on December 4th, 1952 and the pollutants combined with fog. So together pollutants and fog are known as smog and for three days the concentration of the pollutants gradually build up and it started causing deaths. And as we all know, the people who are the most vulnerable are the old elderly and the children. So it was the elderly, the patients who died first. And to, just to give you an idea, the concentration of SO2, that is sulfur dioxide, was 1.34 ppm at that time. However, in clean atmosphere, it's just 0.002 ppm. So you can see it's almost 4,000 times more than the acceptable. So such a high concentration for five days was responsible for causing almost 4,000 deaths in the city of London. So coming on to California from London, so there was a small town and in 1948, sulfur, carbon monoxide and heavy metal dust, they were trapped again due to weather conditions and in just 14 hours, there was 20 deaths. And as the episode continued and entered into its third and fourth day, half the population, almost 7,000 people of that city, they became sick. And again, it was the elderly which were the most affected. Almost 29% of them, they were seriously ill. And it was the upper respiratory symptoms which were in prominence. So there was nasal discharge, constriction of the sore of the throat and sore throat, which they were experiencing and they were unable to breathe properly. So you can see how this issue came into prominence and how it led to severe health impacts. Now, these were the episodes from abroad. Now let's talk about Let's talk and discuss about an episode which is so very Indian, which happened to Indians. So, unfortunately, this is our Bhopal gas disaster of the 1984. It took place in the intervening night of 2nd and 3rd December in the central part of our country, Bhopal, wherein 40 tons of the toxic methyl isocyanide gas leaked from the tanks. And the city was immediately engulfed into this gas and as people woke up, they started dying and the whole place smelled of burning chili peppers, you can see. So of the half million people, roughly 5 lakhs, more than 2000 died immediately and as many as 3 lakh were injured seriously and you can imagine that 30% of the injured people, they were unable to return to their jobs. And even today, 
we are seeing the effects of this disaster. But as we are in India, we still have not been able to give an exact toll. It is said that almost 25,000 people had died. So you can imagine how serious this has been. So from history, now let's talk about air pollution. So air pollution is due to the presence of undesirable solid or gaseous particles in the air and again they have to be in quantities greater to cause harmful impacts on the human health as well as the environment. So there are five primary pollutants which contribute to more than 90% of the global air pollution. So when we talk about these, these are oxides of carbon, oxides of nitrogen, oxides of sulfur, the volatile organic compounds or the VOCs and the suspended particles or the particulate matter. Now talking about the sources, so the two main categories are the natural sources as well as the man-made or the anthropogenic sources. The natural sources are the oceanic aerosols, the volcanic eruptions, the wind blown dust. So these are the natural sources. Then coming on to anthropogenic sources, you have fuel burning, you have transportation, construction, the industries and the thermal power plants which lead to significant emissions of gases as well as the particles. So when we rate these pollutants, the automobiles happen to be the first because of sheer volumes. You have few industries but when you compare it with automobiles, you have growing number of vehicles on our cities. It's growing. Just to give you an example, it's like 88 lakh vehicles on the roads of Delhi. Even smaller cities, for example, Jaipur, you have 18 lakh vehicles. Even smaller, for example, a tier 2 city like Aurangabad, that also has 9 lakh vehicles on its road. So you can imagine, you have 2-3 industries, here you have a huge volume of vehicles. So automobiles happen to be the first rate of polluters, followed by the industries. So as we have just discussed, so it is due to the presence of undesirable solid or gaseous particles in the air in greater quantities, which can cause harmful impacts on the health and environment. So when we categorize them further, you have primary air pollutants and you have secondary air pollutants. So the primary air pollutants are the one which are emitted directly from the sources. They do not undergo any change. So they are in the form in which they are emitted. For example, dust storms and volcanic eruptions and through human activities release these five primary pollutants. So any pollutant which does not undergo any transformation but is in the same form is a primary pollutant or a one degree pollutant. As opposed, you have secondary pollutants. So these are those pollutants which are produced when the primary pollutants interact amongst each other or with the atmosphere. So you have this sulfur, sulfuric acid, the nitric acid and together they are known as acid rain. So when these oxides of nitrogen and sulfur, they interact with the air and the water vapor, they form these acids. So these acids are your secondary pollutants. Even your photochemical smog is a secondary pollutant. So just listing these pollutants for you. So the five major pollutants are carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, the particulate matter and ozone. However, you should notice that this is the ground level ozone and not the stratospheric ozone which is beneficial for us. So talking first about carbon monoxide, CO, not CO2. CO2 will be carbon dioxide. This is CO. This is a colorless, odorless, however, a toxic gas and is produced when the combustion is incomplete. Vehicular exhaust, that is the traffic, is the single largest source of carbon monoxide. And as we all know, the number of vehicles is increasing in our country also, as well as all over the world. So this gas and its concentration is increasing. However, we should note that this is not a persistent pollutant. Can you tell me why this is not a persistent pollutant? 
because it has only one oxygen and it can easily get converted into CO2 with just one more oxygen. So, this is not very harmful and the air can be cleared of its carbon monoxide if there is no more supply of carbon monoxide into the atmosphere. However, this gas is a serious pollutant and we learn about its adverse impacts when we see the human impacts. The second pollutant is sulfur oxides. These are produced when sulfur containing fossil fuels are burned, particularly the coal. Indian coal has higher sulfur content, so you have greater sulfur oxides which are produced when these are burned. So you can see this car and you can see this person who is suffering because of these pollutants. Then coming on to oxides of nitrogen, you have NO and you have NO2 and that is why you have an X. So it could be NO also or it could be NO2 also. So these again are released from vehicular exhaust and these are also significant because they are involved in the production of secondary air pollutants such as ozone. Again. So, thank you. Thank you friends. In the previous session, we were just discussing about air pollution, the causes and we will now see the effects of air pollution. So coming on to the pollutants, we have just discussed the adverse impacts of SO2 and NOx. Now we will talk about the hydrocarbons. So hydrocarbons again an important category. Hydrocarbons if you break, so hydrogen and carbon. So they either evaporate from the fuel supply or are released from the fuel which was incompletely burned. However, they are released into the air and washed out when there is rain. However, they are important because they are involved in the formation of secondary air pollutants. Now, a very important form of pollution which India is facing is your particulate matter pollution, the particles which are of solid material, dust particle, ash from the industry which is released into the atmosphere. However, these are not just particles. Some of these particles can be so serious that they can cause cancer. And if you are repeatedly exposed to such particles, they can enter deep inside into your lungs, can cross the barrier, get into your blood and from the blood they can reach various parts of your body and exert their harmful effects. So these particles are so serious. Now what happens to the pollutants in the atmosphere? So these pollutants may either be transported downwind. So once they are transported, they can be diluted. 
they can either be transformed as we have just seen that they could be either physical or chemical changes. The primary pollutants get transformed into secondary pollutants or these pollutants might either be removed by the effect of rain. So this is what happens when a particular pollutant is released into the atmosphere. Either it is transported to other distances or it is washed or it gets further transformed either physically or chemically. So now we have seen what are the categories of the pollutants. We will also see what are the adverse effects of air pollution. Why are we so concerned about air pollution? So as we have just seen particulates have carcinogenic effects. And as the size of the particle becomes smaller, it can penetrate deeper into our lungs, okay, enter into the bloodstream and again cause damage. Then the prolonged exposure to high particles is responsible for causing cancer and asth asthmatic episodes. Then cigarette smoking is responsible for greatest exposure to CO. And the CO, as we have seen, is serious because carbon monoxide has a great affinity to our hemoglobin. It forms a complex which is 200 times more stable with the complex formed with oxygen. So if CO is there, it forms a stable complex. The oxygen is unable to bind. So a person may die in the absence of oxygen and this is what happens. So it is causing headache, drowsiness as well as nausea and in case it becomes very high in concentration, it may even cause death. Then coming on to SO2, it irritates the respiratory tissues, same as with nitrous, oxides of nitrogen. And coming on to the volatile organic compounds like benzene, formaldehydes, these are carcinogenic, that is cancer causing. So, air pollution does not exert its effects only on the humans. It also has harmful impacts on the plants. So, these particulate, these gases, these particles, they are able to enter the leaf pores, they damage the leaves and because they are able to ex uh, interfere with the gaseous exchange, they also interfere with the photosynthesis and they cause also the leaves to turn yellow or brown or to drop off altogether. Then these pollutants also have an adverse impact on the materials, on the buildings also. You must have known about Taj Mahal, how the presence of the Mathura refinery led to its yellowing. Similar has been the impact of these pollutants on Ajanta Elora, which are caves in Maharashtra. Because these break down the paint on the exterior and also on the marble, also responsible for causing yellowing and the aging of these structures. So it's not that, that their harmful in, impacts are just on the human health, but also on the vegetation and the structures. So coming on to stratosphere, because of air pollution, you have certain chemicals like your CFCs and the HFCs, which are responsible for the depletion of ozone. And as we have seen previously, Ozone is important in the stratosphere because it traps, it does not allow the harmful ultraviolet radiations to reach the Earth's atmosphere. Now, coming on to the status of air pollution in India. With this section, you will be able to realize why are we focusing on this form of pollution. We have already seen how important air is for us and how important it is for us to focus on this sort of pollution. Air pollution has emerged as a global public health problem. As per, as, as per the WHO, the World Health Organization estimate, the outdoor air pollution resulted in almost 3.7 million deaths. So 1 million is 10 lakhs. So you can see it caused 37 lakh deaths in the year 2012. And even today, it's the second largest cause of death in India. When we talk about indoor air pollution, it's the fifth most prominent cause of death in India because ours is a developing country. We are still using the biomass cook stoves. We're still burning 
the cow dung cakes and in small rural kitchens where there is not much of ventilation so the ladies and the children who stay in those kitchens they suffer from indoor air pollution which is an important cause of deaths in our country and across the world further 98% of the cities in the low income and the developing countries do not meet who's air quality guidelines when we talk about our cities 80% of our own cities the indian cities they do not meet our own cpcb that is the central pollution control board guidelines so you can imagine who guidelines are even more strict when we do not follow our own guidelines we still are way far from meeting the who guidelines unfortunately delhi has been always in the limelight for high pollution levels we saw it last year when post diwali just to tell you we had pm concentrations of more than 1000 when the limit is only 60 microgram per cubic cubic meter so we had more than 1000 and still there was an uproar everywhere in the media in the news but still we were bursting crackers so you can imagine we did not care that these levels are so high and we should not be doing this more but we still were bursting crackers however it's important to see that it's not just delhi which is polluted we have other cities also which are fast catching up as per the recent estimates of who which were released in may 2016 delhi is now the 11th most polluted city in the world however we have another unfortunate distinction amongst the tw- top 20 most polluted cities 30 13 cities are from india and the other ones which are closely following delhi are ghaziabad alhabad bareilly faridabad jharia alwar rachi kanpur and patna so a very recent report released in january 2017 says that none of our cities comply with the who standards and there are very few cities which are present in the south of india that follow our own standards so this is these stats are just to highlight the situation which is so unfortunate so coming on since we have such high pollution levels the air pollution has a tremendous impact on our country as we have just discussed outdoor air pollution was the fifth leading cause and the indoor air pollution was the third leading cause of deaths in 2012 in 2000 we had 1 lakh deaths from outdoor air pollution and in 2010 it increased significantly and became 6 lakh 20000 so you can see the jump six times from 1 lakh to over 6 lakhs a significant study by the university of chicago highlighted that pm concentration is so high that it is responsible for reducing our life expectancy by almost 3.2 years so you can imagine every day every year we are losing these many years because of the harmful pollution we are exposed to and when we talk about a city like delhi this estimate has been even made higher it's like 6.2 years for a person living in delhi then this is not just the impact on human health it has an adverse impact on our agricultural productivity as well there was an important study by university of california san diego about the short lived pollutants such as ozone released into the atmosphere by the vehicles and rural burning so this ozone was responsible for reducing the productivity of wheat by 36% in 2010 and that of rice by 20% when we look at figures from 1980 and further economic estimates have been made by the world bank which suggest that for a country like us we are paying the cost of air pollution which is almost 3% of our gdp in terms of days lost the expenses in medical the diseases and the deaths if you calculate all this so we are losing 3% of our gdp because of air pollution so in the next graph you will see the concentration trends in india and these were by cpcb 
So this report was released by CPCV in 2014-15. So you can see the figures. So the figures are with regard to SO2, NO2, and PM10 levels. So you can see that we have high rises for all these three pollutants. However, what is significant is high levels of PM10. That is particles with an aerodynamic diameter of 10 microns and below. So what is important is that these particles are respirable. They can go easily inside into our system and exert their harmful impacts. So we have PM10 concentrations rising in most of our cities. So it's very, very important that this is a cause of concern because in 180 Indian cities, the concentrations have been almost six times greater than the WHO standards. Therefore, this is a cause of concern for us. So when we talk about the control measures, we first of all need proper equipments in place. For example, the industries should have the devices for removing these pollutants at the source where these are being emitted. Then second is the use of unleaded petrol. So now the use of lead in petrol has been curbed and we have unleaded petrol. So lead is no longer a very important dimension for us. Building higher smokestacks. So if you have these higher, so they are released away from the ground. Then the important part is industries should be carefully located. They should be located out of the cities and also after considering their topography and wind directions. Because if a city, a highly populated city is located downwind to an industrial complex, there are chances that the, the pollutants which are emitted from the industry will reach that city downwind and the residents will be impacted. So it's important to locate the city properly and the industries also. So coming on to Delhi, as we have already discussed, previous estimates placed Delhi at the topmost. Sometimes last year it was the fourth, top, fourth most polluted and this year it's like the 11th most polluted city in the world. This is a dubious distinction. We are following China, unfortunately, both in population as well as pollution. And Delhi, despite being the capital, is at the top list of the polluted cities. However, we have several hotspots. It's not just Delhi. We have several cities which are catching up. And the recent list of non-attainment cities, that is the cities which do not follow CPCB standards, state that Ghaziabad, Varanasi, the cities in UP and Bihar, particularly the Indo-Gangetic Plains, they are highly polluted. They are also highly populated. So it's very important to take care of these cities. So we have Euro 4 standards, we have lowering the sulfur content and fortunately we were able to implement the CNG program successfully. However, the sheer increase in the number of vehicles has been huge. So that has nullified all the effects. However, the metro has taken up in a good manner. So we do hope that all these interventions which are being taken up will cause will be responsible for improving the situation of air pollution in our country. Thank you so very much uh, for giving us a deep insight into the topic that is air pollution and as you have already discussed that it is a, a major cause of concern mm -hmm. if we talk about uh, mm, uh, India alone. Uh, so ma'am uh, when we are talking about uh, our country India so we have uh, uh, different regions, different parts, different states and mm -hmm. uh, the condition uh, regarding the air pollution uh, might be different uh, because uh, if we talk about uh, 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 the areas for example the urban urban area or the mm -hmm. rural areas. Uh, so how would we differentiate uh, the uh, air quality uh, check uh, in the different regions of the country? Mm -hmm. See, uh, th th this is a very good point that you have highlighted. See, first of all, what is important is we have a very huge country and we have cities and it is not, Im uh, it's, it's the, the issue is that the problem which is in there in one city might not be important for the other. Every city has its own issue. For example, if you talk about Delhi, we have vehicles. If you talk about Patna, Varanasi, you have brick kilns, which are a cause of concern. And then in some of the cities where you have industries, industry is a cause of concern. Then you talk about Rajasthan, the dust which is from the desert, that is a cause of concern. So we have different reasons 
which are contributing to air pollution in the different cities. But we have this monitoring program, the NAMP, National Ambient Air Quality Monitoring Program of the CPCB. So they're monitoring, they have monitoring stations across the country. So we have almost 629 monitoring stations across the country in 29 states. So how this evaluation is done? Uh, does uh, this evaluation is done on the yearly basis or? Uh, uh, no, these pollutants, you as I just told you that you have monitoring stations and we have just seen the criteria pollutants. We have oxides of carbon, you have sulfur, NO2. So these are the ones which are monitored. So twice a week in places like Delhi where it is a cause of concern, you have more monitoring stations and you have two types of, mm, again, the monitoring stations you have continuous ones and you have manual ones so most of us are most of the stations are like manual ones and you monitor them twice a week uh, we have seen and we have heard more about that uh, uh, during the festive season spe mm -hmm. uh, specifically if you talk about Diwali which is a, a grand festival and celebrated mm -hmm. throughout the country. So uh, what is the condition found at that time uh, specifically covering all the major uh, um, uh, I mean cities or the states of the country. So just to give you some stats. Okay, so when we talk about Delhi, so if you take the annual average PM10 of Delhi, so that is like 220, okay, 220 parts, 220 grams per meter cube. So that is the PM10 concentration, that's an average. When you talk about Diwali, the concentrations were like 1200, so you can imagine 220 is the average, okay, the standard is only 60, and at that time it was close to 1200. So you can see how high the levels were which we were breathing and when we say we it includes the elderly it includes the children the asthmatics the pregnant ladies so you can see how the situation becomes so drastic and i i think it's important that now we realize it we have uh, the uh, certain criteria parameters to mm -hmm. uh, check the air quality. Does we have any equipment or the machineries available so that uh, uh, the air could be purified? Are there uh, any mechanism uh, so that the air filters could be provided in the different areas so that to an extent uh, uh, we can think of controlling the pollution in the air? Uh, see, as per my opinion, I am not a big fan of these technologies, these masks and the purifiers. I do believe that we have already, you can see the status of water. We are on bottled water now everywhere. Now these purifiers and masks are coming in India in a big way. But if we don't get air to breathe, then we can't even imagine what is the situation. Mm -hmm. how, how do we survive then if we don't have air? So what I think is in this regard, if we have smaller traffic islands in between the cities where you have plants, you have plant towers, if we, if we think about natural ways of dealing with pollution, that can go a long way because we are a developing country. We don't have that much finance. We don't have those many resources. So if we can have plants in a big way, indoor air plants are there which purify the indoor air. So if we take care of the plants, if we mm -hmm. have those shelter belts, traffic belts, so that would be responsible. And then biking, having fewer cars. We need a behavioral change in that. We should not say to our children that when you grow up, you'll have a bigger SUV. No, that's not right. Focus should be on public transport. Now we have a metro. We should think about using more and more public transport. Definitely. Though a number of times uh, uh, an attempt is made so that uh, uh, the people of the country could be made aware and we frequently through different mediums uh, uh, raise awareness campaigns also so that uh, mm -hmm. the people might be aware mm -hmm. though people know uh, but still we are in a habit of uh, uh, finding a comfortable life for mm -hmm. ourselves uh, and we believe that uh, uh, what measure should be taken should be taken by the other person rather than uh, me. So uh, uh, at the ground level or um, at the uh, um, I would say at the national level uh, what could be done so that the people would be motivated and uh, they uh, take an uh, attempt so that they could be uh, mm, uh, a reason mm -hmm. to reduce the pollution in the air. See this uh, you have asked a very important question and this question has several dimensions in which it can be answered. So first of all I think it is important for people to be aware 
right we have we did a very small study we have like display monitors across so i don't know whether you are also aware so we went to people and we were just asking them a sim simple question see this you know delhi is polluted you know about air pollution it's there in the media everywhere but there is this display board but are you aware that this board exists and what is it displaying so you'll be surprised to know most people did not know what it was telling so awareness is very very important many people still do not know what is an air quality index so awareness is key second is the monitoring has to be better because if the monitoring is better the results that we are displaying or highlighting so that will make an impact the third is popularization of your public transport the industry also has to be taken they are guilty they are also responsible for <laughs> making this air foul particularly the power plants have heard about badarpur so i think we are going in the right direction it's just that it is going to take us some more time before we actually have more clean air how important it is for every individual who is using uh, the uh, vehicle for the personal use or for the professional use uh, to check their or to get their vehicles checked for the pollution and how frequently one should go for uh, the check up of the uh, this see as we all know that we have this pollution under control certificate so i think every after every 6 3 months you get it and now it has been made for 6 months so it's like twice a year so vehicle tuning is important because if your vehicle is in a proper condition the chances are that it is going to emit less because we have better engines now as compared to previous times so if your vehicle is in a better condition if you maintain it regularly if you have a certificate i think that's your bit that you are doing to keep a check on air pollution we can stop uh, people or we can motivate people uh, not to use uh, their personal vehicles too much or use uh, uh, one vehicle if they have four vehicles in a, in a house but uh, when we talk uh regarding the business point of view when the economy of the country uh depends on the business what we are doing uh, for example the industrialist who is producing goods mm -hmm. uh, so his objective is to uh, generate more and more of the uh, revenue in certain in that conditions uh, how uh, uh, how we could uh, motivate those people or uh, are there any protocols or any rules and regulations for the industries uh, to emit um, uh, these uh, pollutants in the air uh yeah there are norms for the industries first point and second coming on to your question like till today our focus has just been on the road so our roads are congested but we have other options the railways and the waterways which these industries should look in a more mm. promising manner because the railways particularly when we have a very good network connecting the whole of the country if we use railways for sending goods and other things from one part to the other i think that will make a huge difference because it will be economical also and then you have less of congestion on the roads because for an example one bus takes care of 30 cars so that's the comparison so if one or 10 trucks you have just one train so you can see definitely so uh, does companies could also uh, develop their self assessed protocol within the company itself mm -hmm. because uh, there are the uh, i've heard there are certain uh, certification criteria also yeah. that uh, your license is confiscated yeah. if you uh, if uh, uh, you are in mode of producing mm -hmm. uh, goods and the, uh, this production is causing uh, great pollution in the air so what kind of certification and confiscation of uh, this uh, certification is see we have legislations we have the air air act we have the environment pollution uh, the environment protection act so under these uh, acts you have provisions that if somebody is emitting and despite be given notice by the pollution control board if they are not then they have to pay a fine hefty mm -hmm. fine and if they do not listen they'll be closed and then you have environmental management system for the industry see it's also important that the industry is focused because if they are emitting more that means that their process also is not efficient so they are wasting money and energy into it so these days industries are getting concerned and also it is important that the industry is labeled green because then they'll have more people coming to them so 
every company has their uh, uh, own way of um, uh, implementing the corporate social responsibility yeah. so uh, does it becomes the uh, individual owners or the company owners uh, to make it as a part of the co corporate social responsibility that um, uh, they should keep more and more uh, the thing into account that yes the mm -hmm. air should be f uh, free from the pollutants uh, so what uh, what these uh, companies could uh, do there on their mm -hmm. part uh, so that uh, they fulfill this criteria also see with such clear focused media attention as well as that of the public the com the companies are also becoming concerned that see if we are not doing something good or not in a manner that can benefit the society people will be after us so it's important and the companies are taking note of it so we do hope that in future this will be an important part in abroad it has become a very important dimension to be clean and green so in india also this trend is catching up so very soon we'll have clean and green companies definitely we'll have uh, uh, a clean environment if each one of us would uh, help Uh, would you lend a uh, helping hand uh, so uh, be the part of uh, this particular campaign which we are required to raise by ourselves so through this lecture we would uh, pledge that uh, uh, we would be contributing uh, our say on uh, this uh, particular campaign dear friends we believe that you might have liked the lecture if you have any queries feedback do write to us at info.cc at the written ic dot in and with this note we would like to thank dr gatanjali koshik for uh, uh, giving Giving her precious time as well as inputs to the lecture. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so, so very much. much.